And we are live. It's Dr. J here. We got a live video today on omega-3 versus omega-6 fatty acids. Really excited to talk about this topic. Again, anytime we're talking about omega-6 versus omega-3, we're always looking at inflammation, right? Inflammation is really important. So we have this natural balance of breaking down cells and building up, right? Catabolic means breaking down. Anabolic means building up. And the more inflammation we have, the more inflammation runs amok, the more we're breaking down at a higher level, we're gonna have pain, we're gonna have swelling, uh, we're gonna have an inability to heal. Typically, if we have a harder time healing, there's typically gonna be more fatigue, there's gonna be less libido, there's gonna be less ability to put on muscle and be healthy because all of those things require a good amount of anabolic metabolism so we can build back up. Now, if we look at like a generalized paleo template, which is the, the overall dietary template what I look at. So it's anti-inflammatory, nutrient-dense, low-toxin foods, and ideally foods that are going to be you know grain-free, dairy-free with the exception of maybe some grass-fed butter, ghee, if you can tolerate pasture-fed um, milk and dairy or cheese sources, that may be okay. Uh, healthy amounts of you know more vegetables than fruit and starch, and then maybe the right amount of nuts and seeds and your omega-6 fats as well. So that's kind of the generalized dietary paleo template. And I'm not a big fan of jumping on board of like what type of macronutrient you should be on. I tend to be a little bit more biased towards the lower carbohydrate side, but in general, a paleo template is, is great and you want to work with your functional medicine doc to customize that for you. But on the inflammation side, omega-3 fatty acids are helpful. Now, we can get omega-3 fatty acids primarily from fish. Um, you can get it from grass-fed meat, grass-fed beef. Cows that actually eat grass, they're going to get more GLA and more omega-3 fatty acids than if they're fed grain and corn. And then, of course, um, you're going to get it from egg yolks as well. So egg yolks, uh, fish, wild Alaskan sockeye, skipjack, any of these really good high selenium to low mercury ratio fish, you're going to get it from grass-fed beef and egg yolks. And omega-6, you're going to see more on the, the nuts and sea pathways. And, of course, the more refined your plant oils are, the more omega-6. The problem with plant oils, with the exception of cold-pressed olive oil and maybe some avocado oil, is you're gonna have a lot of refinement to get those fats out. And the refinement can damage those fatty acids. One, they're omega-6, so they're polyunsaturated fats, meaning they have many different omega bonds. There's six of them, right? Omega-3s have three omega bonds. Omega-6 have six double bonds. So three double bonds for the omega-3, six for the omega-6. The more double bonds you have, the more um, unstable that fat is for heat. So with a lot of the vegetables and the omega-6s, you're gonna have a lot of processing to extract them. There aren't a lot of cold press options. Therefore, you're gonna damage the fats and they're gonna go down more of those pro-inflammatory pathways. So let me put an image on screen. We'll see how it works. See if this guy's helps, uh, see if this kind of helps you guys wrap your head around the topic. So off the bat, you're gonna see your omega-3s here on the top right. You're gonna see alpha linoleic acid. This is the main omega-3 you're going to see a lot of vegans and vegetarians get. It's an 18 carbon fatty acid. Now, there's a lot of conversion that has to happen from this ALA to EPA. If you have insulin resistance, if you have any bit of inflammation already, only about 20% of this may get converted. That's why I'm always more of a proponent of getting high quality animal fats in there because the fatty acids convert better. If we're relying more on plant-based fats, or even plant-based nutrients, there's a lot of conversion that has to happen. You see it with, for instance, um, in ALA to DHA or EPA fats. You're going to see it with um, beta carotene and vitamin A. That has to convert as well. You'll see it in just not absorbing certain things like B12 and iron a lot of times are hard to absorb when they come from non-heme sources. They just convert a lot better. So omega-3 with ALA, which is 18 carbon, it gets converted to EPA, which is our, our typical fish oil. EPA has more anti-inflammatory benefits. And then DHA, decosahexanoic acid, which is a 22 carbon, this is really helping on the neurological side. So if you have inflammation in the brain or neurological issues, DHEA is helpful. Typically, you have like a two to one ratio EPA to DHEA on average, depending on the kind of fish. So these fats are really good because of the conversion. Not much conversion has to happen. I see a lot of vegans and vegetarians that rely on ALA or they'll take more of the algae-based fats, which is how the fish actually make their omega-3s. They eat the algae in the ocean and then they make their EPA and DHA from that. Okay, good. So we hit that up. So these are better because of the conversion process. Anti-inflammatory, they tend to go down more of these prostaglandin 1 and 3 pathways, which have really good anti-inflammatory benefits. And then we have omega-6. 
So we want a ratio of ideally one to one, so one omega-3 to one omega-6, but you can go as high as four to one, meaning four omega-6 per at one omega-3. Typically, if we're eating good quality animal sources, we're gonna be golden, and if we're not going too high on the omega-6 fatty acids, like even nuts or seeds, they may have some good nutrients in there, but if we go way too much on that and not enough grass-fed meat, egg yolks, and um, let's just say fish, and let's say the, the nutrients that those animals ate, meaning they were like farm-raised, we may have less omega-3s even in those products that are supposedly supposed to have omega-3 in it. So what your animals eat actually makes a big difference. So omega-6 fatty acids, um, arachidonic acid is gonna be very high in meats, but like we mentioned earlier, if your animals are eating good quality grass-fed, pasture-fed, you're gonna have less arachidonic acid and more omega-3. Some arachidonic acid's totally fine. We don't wanna be zero. It's all about balance, and if we eat healthy meats, we'll get a good companion bit of omega-3 to this arachidonic acid. And you can see all these things can make a lot of pro-inflammatory compounds here. You can see thromboxanes, leukotrienes, prostaglandins, eicosanoids, these are pro-inflammatory. And then we have our anti-inflammatory on this side. And then you can see the, the LOX and the, and the COX, which is the cyclooxygenase. These are the enzymes that the Vioxx used to block in the early 2000s that were causing heart attacks and strokes. This enzyme, it helps with inflammation, but it also helps repair the gut and the heart. So people were blocking this pro-inflammatory pathway with Vioxx while at the same time were preventing their guts and their hearts from regenerating, hence all the strokes and heart attacks. And then if we go look over here, next image, here are omega-6 pathways. So we have our lina, we have our linoleic acid, or yeah, lina, linoleic acid, which is an omega-6, that gets converted to alpha linolenic acid. Alpha linolenic acid is flaxseed, and then it gets converted downstream here. And then on the omega-3, here's our ALA, I'm sorry, this AA is arachidonic acid. So we had linoleic acid to arachidonic acid. Pardon me. So linoleic to arachidonic acid. And then over here on the omega-3 side, we had the alpha linolenic acid. This is the flaxseed. And then we had the EPA, which is the eicosapentaenoic acid. This is the fish oil. Remember, more anti-inflammatory. Here's your prostaglandin 3 pathway, very anti-inflammatory. And then it went to the DH. A, decosahexanoic acid, 22 carbons here, 20 carbons here, very anti-inflammatory as well. So all the green are inflammatory resolving. So think of green as reducing inflammation and think of your omega-6, anything in red are pro-inflammatory. So you can see even with some of the omega-6, there are some that do go down some of these anti-inflammatory pathways. The LXA4 is one. There are also some good omega-6 fats like black currant seed oil, or borage oil. These oils tend to go down a dihomo-gamma-linoleic acid pathway, which can go more to the prostaglandin 1. Prostaglandin 1. So here's your prostaglandin 3 over here. There should be a prostaglandin 1. So here's your prostaglandin 2. Uh, this is pro-inflammatory. Here's your prostaglandin 3, which is anti-inflammatory. There should be a 1 over here, but that prostaglandin 1 is gonna be fed by dihomo gamma linoleic acid, which is somewhere in between this step here. And that can be very helpful for women who have acne issues. It can be very helpful at modulating hormones and helping with skin and acne. So I use it in the form of black currant seed oil, which works really good. So kind of take home is make sure the animals you ate eat really good grass, pasture raised, bugs if you're eating you know, good chicken eggs, uh, grass fed for the cows, um, fish, try to make sure they're wild caught, wild Alaskan sockeye, skipjack tuna. These are great sources of omega-3 fatty acids, and you're gonna get less arachidonic acid when your animals eat healthy. Omega-6 from nuts and seeds and vegetables are fine. Be careful on the fragile vegetable oils, safflower, sunflower, canola, uh, those are not so good. The saturated fats are better, right? They have single bonds between each carbon, which make them more heat stable. Coconut oil, uh, grass-fed butter. Avocado oil is decent because it's a higher smoke point, but it's still unsaturated. Uh, any of your tallows, beef tallow, duck tallow. Uh, palm oil is actually pretty decent. That's a plant-based saturated fat. Those are some really good options. And if you want to dive in deeper or reach out to any of my colleagues and, and working on inflammation, food is the start and then we dive in deeper to actually look at all these hormones these adrenal hormones and, and the gut because all this stuff has to get absorbed to the gut and if we have poor digestion even the best foods may not go to where it needs to go in the body all right hope that helps i will open it up here for some questions if people have written let's check you out 
Okay, let me kill some of these pictures here. Hope you guys like this new format. I'm just kind of playing around with it because I figure I can pull some pretty cool pictures in that may help you guys out. Question, what do you think about taking extra omega-3s post-workout? Wouldn't that blunt the beneficial inflammatory stress to muscle gain? Yeah, I think overall, you don't need to hit omega-3s right after a workout. There's a natural anti-inflammatory or natural inflammatory stress called hormesis, which does help your muscles build and get stronger. So I like that. Uh, Omega-3s in general are great. If you're going to go higher dose omega-3s, make sure you're doing extra vitamin C or antioxidants because there's something called lipid peroxidation. Because of the double bonds between each carbon, there's three double bonds in omega-3, that makes the um, fat a little less stable. So because it's a little less stable, you're gonna need more antioxidants to stabilize that cell membrane. So if you're gonna go higher, six to eight grams, you know, go up on the vitamin C, maybe two to four grams a day, just to make sure that cell membrane's gonna be stable. Uh, what's the best way to get rid of teenage acne? So if it's a female, it just depends, male or female. But of course, the diet, getting all the inflammatory foods, getting all the omega-3 paleo foods dialed in, which are gonna be grass-fed meat, of course, egg yolks are going to be great. And then omega-3, good quality, wild-caught fish are going to be excellent. Getting all the junky omega-6 fatty acids out. Uh, you can start by cutting out nuts and seeds with the acne just to be safe because nuts and seeds could be a food allergy issue. And then you can work on more vegetables, a little less fruit and starch because a lot of times blood sugar can surge insulin. Insulin can create uh, sebum to form from the sebaceous gland, which can feed bacteria on the skin. But if you're a female... Um, black currant seed oil can be very helpful and then getting hydrochloric acid and enzymes on board can be helpful too because if we digest our food better it can help all those nutrients to get to where they need to go all right excellent yeah and then omega-9 is going to be oleic acid that's going to be your um, olive oil olive oil is pretty much oleic acid so i kind of you have your polyunsaturated fatty acids these are your omega-6 and 3s you have your monounsaturated fatty acids, which are kind of where your avocado sits and where olive oil sits. And then you have your saturated, which are, have no double carbons, double bonds between the carbons, uh, which make them more stable, which is great. You're totally welcome. What do you guys think of this kind of setup, having the pictures in the background like that, like I did earlier? What do you guys think? Do you guys like that when I put an image up like that? Does that help make it a little bit more user-friendly? Let me know in the comments. All right, any other questions, guys? Let me know. Sardines are excellent, absolutely. The smaller the fish, the less mercury, because the higher up in the food chain you go, right, from tuna to shark to pilot whale, you have more mercury. You can have a decent bit of mercury in fish, but if you have more selenium in that fish naturally, um, selenium will naturally chelate out the mercury. So skipjack tuna, wild Alaskan sockeye, cod haddock, it's going to be very helpful because it will naturally chelate out the mercury, which is great. Excellent. Very good. Glad you guys like that. What can they topically use on the acne? So typically with acne, topically, a good toner can be helpful. Just to one, balance the pH of the skin and clear off any of the oils. And then number two, I would say if there's like any acne scarring, I mean, you can always do retinol. Retinol can be helpful. There's the drug form Retin-A, which can be a little bit more irritating. And then there's the natural retinol in a supplement form, which can be great. And then you can also do topical omega or topical vitamin C can be very helpful for skin and for collagen. I use a couple of formulas that are called Barrier Restore Serum and then Lipid Barrier Complex. Those are the two that I use by Marie Veronique. We'll try to put links maybe below. Krill oil is great. Um, there's phospholipid bonds between the krill oil, so the dose of omega-3 is way lower, EPA and DHA, but supposedly the absorption is better because of the phospholipids. I'm not sure clinically I see that, so I tend to stick more to the fish oil. I tend to get a really good clinical effect, and I do think um, krill oil is still good, but if patients have inflammation, I'll go higher dose on the omega-3 with the fish or cod liver oil. The benefit with adding cod liver oil to this whole thing is you may get more um, vitamin A. So that can be a really great benefit. So if someone has skin issues where someone asked a minute ago, we could add in omega-3s, but do it through cod liver oil so you get the extra omega A internally, and then we'll do topical retinol, which is vitamin A um, on the skin. So I think I said omega A, I meant vitamin A. So vitamin A with the omega-3 in the cod liver oil, and then vitamin A topically via retinol is a great way to go. Okay, excellent. Glad you guys like that. 
fish oil liquid repeats on me. How do I stop this? Can, can I swallow the pills? You can't swallow the pills. So what you could do is you could take it with food and take extra enzymes and lipase. That could be a good option. In my line, I created my Omega Supreme with lipase in it for that reason because the enzymes are there to help process the fats. People that where it repeats on them or refluxes on them, it could be you don't have enough enzymes to be able to handle that. That could be a possibility. Do you think omega-3 will help my dry eyes? Absolutely. Omega-3s will definitely help your dry eyes. Also, low cortisol can cause dry eyes. A little bit of carbs before bed may help with that too. If you eat wild-caught Alaskan sockeye every single day for years, is that too much omega-3 when you cut omega-6s out totally? Uh, in general, I mean, I would probably recommend three to four servings of fish per week. I wouldn't go higher than that just because I am a tiny bit concerned of mercury. But would that be too much omega-3? I mean, you're probably going to be eating other forms of meat. So get varieties of, you know, chicken, beef, egg yolks, and you're going to get other types of omega-6 within those other types of animal products. So as long as you're getting other kinds of animal products and it's not every single meal, you're probably gonna be okay. But every single day, maybe a little much. Maybe cut it down to four days a week. Can you put cod liver oil on your face? Oh my gosh, that you might as well be wearing garlic around your neck. Man, you will never get a girlfriend or a boyfriend again. But uh, in general, cod liver oil, take it internally. If you're gonna do a good fat externally, there are some decent nut and seed-based oil fats or elderberry oil. My favorite for the fatty acids is gonna be the lipid barrier complex that has some excellent fatty acids it also has cholesterol in there it has ceramides which are really good for the skin so i like that formula my skin does the best with that the lipid barrier complex but yeah man that is like my wife gets on my case every night when i give my son cod liver oil if he gets a little bit of cod liver oil on his lips you can just smell it and she just complains about it so i just think man if you rubbed it on your face yikes um, I eat a lot of grass, so I'd be perfect. So you're doing everything right then. That's good. Awesome, guys. All right, any other questions, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. If you like this type of setup, with, I grab a couple of images, chat about it. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate the motivation. Also, I want to know about your experience using omega-3s. What's been your experience? Has it been beneficial? Did you have a problem? I want to hear about it. I'll be able to respond to them later. And then any other topics for future videos to come, let me know as well. I want to get inspired. I want to just wake up in the morning, check my feed, and see what other videos or topics I can start researching. Do you ship fish oil to Canada? Yes, we do. We do. Feel free. You can always jump online or email the office. If you go to justinhealth.com shop, you can put it in there, and we do ship to Canada. I have lots of patients in Canada. Awesome, guys. All right, I'm going to jump off here. Hope you guys had a phenomenal day, and we'll stay in touch. Take care.